comment link on the topic, price at the center. And I'm going to continue from where I left off in Christ there is salvation. And the passage that I will be speaking from tonight is Colossians 2, from verse 16 to 23. And before I begin, I will open with a word of prayer. Let us pray. churches, I grew up always having to deal with a bunch of rules, okay? And if you, you are a person like me, I hate rules. I was the type of person that if there was a rule, I was going to try to break it because I hated to be confined in a box. And in Caribbean churches, they're, they're just a bunch of rules. I remember growing up, there was a rule, you know, you can't go to the movies, and in, in my time, uh, women couldn't wear pants, and women couldn't wear jewelry, and young boys couldn't go to church wearing short pants. It was just like ridiculous. All these rules, all these rules. And 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 I was I I, I was the type of person. I was I said I always said to myself like I do not want to hold myself to these type of, of rules. And as I began to see God more, because even though I grew up in the church. I wasn't always spiritually mature. I was very carnal at some point in time. And after I began to take my Christianity seriously, and I wanted to go spiritually, I, I sought elders and all the individuals in the church for advice on how I can grow spiritually. And they just kept giving me these bunch of rules. You know, if you want to cleanse yourself, you know, you have to fast. You got what I'm saying. If you want to, you know, if you want to be more holy, you have to do this, you have to do that. And I, as I got more mature and I, I studied my word more, I was like, this can't be the way. And I always felt like if I was just contained. And instead of growing spiritually, I felt like if I was just straying away from, from, from Christ. Why? Because my focus was not on Christ. And I think this is kind of the same idea that what, what was happening in, in Colossae. The Church of Colossae, for, for some reason, there, there was this particular philosophy of false teachers that, that came up. And this particular philosophy, what it did, it focused on human traditions, you know, the, the human traditions of Ju Judaism, just keeping the Sabbath, so circumcision. And they even had some type of, of Gnostic thought of the worshiping of angels to, to become more spiritual, to move to a different realm. So these are some of the things that, that Paul had to deal with. And, and from this, the, the main point, the main thing that I want to bring forth tonight is that we should make Christ our focus. You should make Christ your focus. And just as when I was growing spiritually, and I, I realized at some point, listen, Christianity should not be about just these bunch of rules. I remember a particular time when I moved to the United States. I was living with my aunt, and she, she went to this particular church. And because I was living with her, I had to go to the church. I didn't have a choice. And the, the church, the, it was just a very, very different, peculiar church. And, and they, they also had a, a bunch of rules. One of the rules was that you could not participate in the church if you weren't filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. They also thought that if you didn't speak in tongues, that you were truly saved. That's what they thought. Another rule that they had is that <coughs> you, to truly attain salvation, you, but you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They didn't believe in the Trinity. They believed that you had to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ or you will not receive salvation. And I remember, man, I, I thought to myself, is this really what, what salvation is? And coming from a, a Nazarene background, I'm entering into uh, 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 apostolic, that's the name of the tradition, apostolic tradition, I, I, I 
right there with my aunt, and I had all these people telling me, well, you're not truly saved because you're not baptized in the name of Jesus, and you, you haven't been spoken in tongues, so you, you truly don't have the Holy Spirit, so you're truly not a part of Christ, you're not united to Christ. And, and I began to get misled. I began to, to think, well, I, I'm, I really must not be saved. But I came to a point in, in my, my salvation, in my walk with Christ, that I realized, listen, I should not allow human traditions to, to bog me down, or human traditions is not the true essence of what salvation is. Human tradition in itself does not have value. If it truly does not focus on Christ, if it takes the focus off of Christ, then I, sh I really don't have to adhere to it. And this is what Paul was trying to teach or trying to tell the church in Colossae. That don't allow these different teachings, don't allow all, all these rules, these people who want to adhere to all these rules, to judge you. Because that's how I felt. I felt condemned. I looked myself in the middle and I was like, oh Jesus, I am going to hell. If I'm not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to hell if I don't speak in tongues. And it was only until I came to Southeastern and I, I studied my word more and I spoke to professors and I got good counsel, I realized, listen, I was being misled by these people. And I think that, yes, these people, they, I, I think they, they, they didn't mean me any bad, but they, they, they misunderstood the scripture. But what I realized is that human tradition should point to Christ. Human tradition should point to Christ, which brings me to my, my, my next point, that as Christians, we should keep our focus on Christ. We should keep our focus on Christ. When we keep our focus on Christ, we stay connected to Christ as the head of the body. We stay connected to Christ. And I, I also remember that when I was going to this particular church, they told me, you know, to go spiritually, you have to fast and you have to do all these bunch of spiritual disciplines. And I understand that spiritual disciplines, they are necessary. Spiritual disciplines, they are good. But what happened to me is instead of focusing on Christ, focusing on my relationship with Christ, I started to focus on these spiritual disciplines. And I started to think to myself, well, I'm fasting. And I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm, I'm attending church regularly, I'm reading my Bible regularly, I'm memorizing my scriptures, so I am spiritual. I am super spiritual. And what it did, it took the focus off of Christ, and it placed the focus on me. And instead of going spiritually and being connected to Christ, what happened to me is I started to stray away from Christ. And I was wondering to myself, I'm doing all of these things. I'm obeying all of these rules that they're giving me. I'm doing everything that they tell me to do. But yet still, I find myself lusting. I find myself doing things that I'm not supposed to do. I find myself thinking about things that I'm not supposed to be thinking about. I thought that these rules, if I obeyed these rules, that they would control or restrict my physical passions. But I, I, I realized that. These rules in itself, these traditions in themselves, could not control or restrict my physical passion. So focuses on, focusing on human tradition can also lead to pride. If you're not connected to Christ and the body, you will grow. If you're not connected to Christ, you will not grow spiritually. So the only way we can truly grow spiritually is if we stay connected to Christ. If we stay connected to Christ. And that is what Paul was trying to, to tell the church of Colossae. These, he was telling that these people, these teachers, they are puffed up. They, are, they think that they are spiritual, but they are filled with pride. They practice a false humility. And that's where I found myself. I became self-righteous. I started to look down on people who were around me, my, my siblings and my cousins. I said, well, they're not doing what I'm doing. I'm fasting. I'm reading my Bible on a regular basis. I'm doing all these things. I'm memorizing scriptures. So, you know, I'm, I'm better than they are. And instead of going spiritually, I became self-righteous. I became self-righteous. Which brings me to my next point that I had to come to the realization that, well, these things weren't working for me. And even though I was trying to do them, I still 
found myself in sin, I started to get depressed. I started to condemn my own self. And I had to come to the realization that, listen, it's not about all these traditions. It's not all about these rules. It's about Christ and his grace. The grace of Christ, it is sufficient. It is sufficient to carry me through. It is sufficient to save me. It is sufficient for me to control and to restrict my physical passions. And it was only until when I began to walk in the grace of God to place my focus on Christ, to allow Christ to be the center of my decisions, to allow Christ to be the center of my thoughts, until I place my focus on Christ where I, I allow the Holy Spirit to transform me instead of trying to use rules and traditions to control my passions, it was only until I allowed the Holy Spirit to change my desires, that was when I began to truly go spiritually and I allowed Christ to be the center of the focus. And then, as I studied the scripture, I realized this is what it is. Christ died for me. And because Christ died for me, I no longer have to be bondage to rules. I didn't understand that. All these rules, what they did, they held me bondage. But when I placed my focus on Christ, I received freedom. I received liberty. Why? Because Christ died so I could be free from the elemental forces of this world. So when I realized that when I depended on tradition, that I put myself back in bondage. But when I allowed the Spirit of Christ to transform me, and I allow myself to listen to his voice and to read his word, then I was truly able to restrict my passions. So, what did I conclude from my own personal experience? What did Paul try to teach the church at Colossae? He tried to teach them that Christ is the only one who can restrain our physical passions. Christ is the only one. When we place Christ at the center of our life, when we don't allow people to mislead us, when we stay connected to the body of Christ, then we are able to restrain our passion and truly experience the grace of God. Let us pray. Father, I just truly thank you for your love and your goodness. And Jesus, we're so thankful that you died on the cross for our sins, that we may be free from traditions and rules, and that we can truly experience the grace of God. I pray that we may walk freely in your grace, and as we walk freely, that we may grow in maturity, as we allow your spirit to transform us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.